Now, as companies and corporations expand across Asia and elsewhere, they're faced with a growing challenge in not increasing their carbon footprint. But when the Reed group of companies expanded into Australia, they came up with an innovative solution to their new computing needs. Well, here to tell us all about it is the head of IT services at Reed, Sean Whetstone. Welcome to you, Sean. Um, Thank you. I'm guessing that that is a key part of, of what you did. Tell me a little bit about it. It is. So this device here um, is made by a company called Wise, a US company, but it's a global company. And it uses around 10% of the power that a normal PC would use. And because it doesn't have an operating system and it doesn't have fans and hard disks, it can be sh shut down overnight. So it's overnight. as powerful as a normal PC, but yes. obviously a miniature version which uses much less energy. It's a miniature version that doesn't have an operating system. So it uses infrastructure servers in a data center. So companies such as Reed can use data centers in the UK to supply um, services and applications all around the world. So once you hook it up to a normal monitor, anyone using that computer shouldn't notice any difference? No, they would see exactly what they would see with a PC. Okay, and um, it's been successful in reducing your carbon footprint? It's been fantastic in reducing our carbon footprint. We've managed to reduce our carbon footprint by two and a half thousand tons of CO2 in 2006 and a similar amount in 2007. Does that mean you're now carbon neutral or are you still working? Well, we're carbon neutral from a point of view of offsetting our carbon. We did that in 2005. But what we're trying to do is reduce our carbon footprint by 2000, by about 20% in yeah. 2007. Of course, but beyond the environmental side of things, there, there's an actual um, business uh, cost or reduced cost to this mm. because presumably your, your power bill's gone down. Of course, because efficiency is, is, is saving money as well. So our, our utility bills have gone down by uh, nearly a quarter million pounds through, from rolling out this technology. Yeah. But of course some companies would be put, up, uh, put off by the, by the cost of bringing in all these new terminals. Did you do it at a point where you were looking to replace the hardware anyway? We were doing it at a point where our PCs have become obsolete, so we were doing a technology refresh anyway. So it made sense to do it at that point, invest in this technology. Yeah. The big point as well is this technology will last a lot longer than the PC. So we're designing this to last up to eight years, where maybe a PC would last three to four years. And what about the initial outlay in uh, buying one of those terminals rather than an ordinary standard PC? Uh, well, that's a great thing, considerably less. Yeah. So maybe 20 to 30 percent of the price so of the PC. So less cost at the outset, and it's going to last yeah. longer, and it's going to reduce your power. Yes. Bill. I'm struggling to see a downside in this. It's a bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? <laughs> Well, let's see how, how many other companies actually um, follow your, your lead in this. Um, but something you're planning to expand elsewhere in the world as well? Yes, we've, we've recently rolled out to Australia, Melbourne and Sydney. So instead of investing into infrastructure in Australia, we managed to put in infrastructure back in the UK, which they, they do what they call follow the sun. So use the same servers that we use for our UK market in a different time zone for Australia. So again, efficient from an energy point of view and from a, a cost and expense point of view as well. Well, thanks very much for coming in to tell us all about it. Thank and, you. And uh, good luck with the rest of the initiatives. Thank, Thank you. you.